It is approximately 11 p.m. on September 18, 1976. Citizens of Tehran, Iran are frightened by a large lighted orb circling above them. I turned toward it and put it on my 12 o'clock. I got close to it and you can't imagine all of a sudden it jumped from here to here, just like that. Based on his location, Jafari estimates the object has traveled almost 28 miles to his right in the blink of an eye. This movement was well beyond the capabilities of any man-made object. I asked the um, tower if they had any flight. They said no, they ha don't have any flight overhead. As Jafari continues his approach toward the object, he witnesses something incredible. Something like a moon came out of it. A second object came out of the first Another object. Another object below the horizon and starts flying toward me. This second orb-like object descends from beneath the triangular lights and races toward Jafari's F4. Although Jafari is traveling at supersonic speed, this incoming craft streaks by his jet and circles him as if he's standing still. Now imagine I'm flying to a speed of close of sound and something making circling around me. After circling Jafari's aircraft, the second orb now returns to the larger diamond-shaped craft, still hovering approximately 25 miles in the distance. For a moment, Jafari thinks he is out of danger, but to his astonishment, another orb has descended and is streaking directly toward his jet for the second time. Jafari now believes he is under attack. He reaches for his instrument panel to arm and fire an A-9 heat-seeking missile. But what happens next shocks him. Green and red light should be both on so I could fire. When I looked back on the left side of the instrument panel, the weapon panel was out, no light on it. Jafari believes that in the heat of combat with this UFO, it sent a massive pulse of electromagnetic energy toward his plane Temporary of the onboard electronics, including the navigation equipment, avionics, and weapon systems. With a disabled missile system and no way to defend against this unknown object, Jafari considers ditching his plane. I thought if it comes closer than four or five months, I'm going to jump out. But before Jafari has to make that fateful decision, the object reverses direction and once again returns to the larger craft. When it moved away from me, I could see the main object dead and went right underneath it and disappeared. Having just endured a harrowing engagement with multiple UFOs over the dark skies north of Tehran, Major Jafari decides it is no longer safe to continue tracking this mysterious diamond-shaped object. He is granted permission to return to Tehran, but as he descends, he realizes a second chapter of his encounter is about to unfold. When I was on descent, again another of these round shape was chasing me. As Jafari descends for his approach to Marabad Airport, he sees another small object chasing from behind. On his final approach, he looks over his shoulder and witnesses the object descending toward the desert floor. I could see all of the sands on the ground, which was so bright, so bright. Jafari is diverted from landing and is ordered to identify the object that has appeared to touch down near the airbase. According to both military and civilian eyewitnesses, the object is believed to have crash-landed just outside of Shemaran, Iran. In a very fancy speed toward the ground, which I thought I will see a very, very big explosion. But it didn't happen. The object came right on the ground and stopped there. Upon landing at Mirabad Airport, Parviz Jafari knew he would have to soon debrief his commanders about the night's events. 
What he didn't realize is that the Iranian military weren't the only ones interested in his encounter. One of the American colonel was listening to me, writing, taking note. 